So folks, we didn't get a video out yesterday. Uh, I did watch a ton of videos in the morning on the um, DJI Osmo, and I kind of got a basics of the, you know, how to use it. Um, you can only watch so many tutorials and it kind of overwhelms you. And I learned a little bit about the Mimo app and how you can also shoot just using your regular camera app, which is kind of cool. And so, uh, I said to myself, well, let's get everything set up for a video. And I got everything set up. I even mounted the phone we're going to use, which is the new mobile G3 of all things. We're using a new mobile G3 uh, because it has no EIS whatsoever. And if you end up with a phone with no EIS, the whole thing is one of these things. We'll cure that problem for you at a relatively inexpensive price, and it'll work with practically any cell phone you own. So I had everything set up. I had the phone in, hold it down, hooked to the Osmo, and I was ready to go. I was going to, you know, start the video and unsnap it and turn the gimbal on. Up it would come, and I had already had balanced it, and then I looked at the, uh, you yeah. know, equipment that was set up, so I said, you know what, I need another nap, and I need to get warm again to shoot this, I can't concentrate, I can't remember the order I was going to shoot in, and what I was going to say, and how I was going to use you know, the cameras that I have set up here. Uh, so, I took the MPO uh, M30s, stuck them in my ear, started playing music, laid down again, turned out all the lights. It was like 8.30 p.m., and I, I'm thinking, maybe I should set an alarm. Didn't need one. At about one in the morning or so, and it turned out to be, it worked out to four hours and 40 or so minutes. BM Pow, the left or the right earbud first says, low power. And 10 seconds later, it says, low power, shutting down. And off it went. And then, like five seconds later, the other one did that. So I Got up, stuck them back in the charging case, and then checked my email, looked at all the equipment sitting here, and went, how the hell with that? And then I laid down again in bed, and I woke up like 6.30, and I felt even worse than the previous day. I was just freezing my ass off. So I finally sent a text message you know, to one of the guys I work with, and I said, well, I'm running late, I'll try to get in there. And so, I'm doing that, and, uh, well, I, I, every time I tried to get out of bed, I just couldn't get out. I'd put my legs over the edge, and I'd fall to the other side, and I'd end up with my feet up on the pillow sleeping that way. And I finally poked around in the other restroom in here and I found a thermometer. I stuck it in my mouth and I went, oh, I got 102 fever. Well, I work with two guys with kids. And uh, I also have the stuffy nose and a little bit of a cough going. So those are all symptoms of you know, the flu or fever or COVID-19. And I certainly don't want to be the first guy in this county spreading it. And their kids would be fine, the one of the guys, because they're good health and they're not that young. And he's in good health, his wife's in good health. The other guy, he's in pretty decent health and his wife's in okay health and their daughter's in good health. But his son, has an immuno 
problem. His immune system is weak. And the last thing I wanted to do is go into work and take a chance on spreading that. And then my boss is 70 years old. And he's in okay health, but he's over 70. And his wife's up near the same age. They're both older than me. I don't want to be the guy that kills him. So I did a little thinking and said, I'm not going in. I got a 102 feeder. And I laid back down and I managed to, I don't know, kind of sleep on and off till about 3.15. And since then, I've been trying to do this video. And it's so hard to concentrate when you're freezing to death. Uh, now today I have about, um, it's like, it was last I checked, it was at 99, maybe 100. It's one of them old glass ones yeah, from the ancient times. But it works. And uh, I'm like, okay, I, I, I can't go anywhere. And I needed some cigarettes, and I went, you know, I can't go anywhere because I might give somebody there this. And all of a sudden, all this stuff, you start going, well, damn, I don't want to get anyone else sick. And now, there are no cases reported in this area, but I certainly don't want to be the first guy. And then everyone's going to go, oh, I had contact with that guy. That bastard. And uh, I don't want to be the guy to spread it. So I called the doc, and the doc says, well, if your symptoms get worse, uh, call the local health department. And they'll send somebody over, and they'll give you one of those tests. And I'm like, OK, sounds good. And so I'm thinking tomorrow I might go into work, but what I'll do is I'll wave them, the two boys outside, and, and tell them, you know, I'll be like, stay away. Here's the story. And I don't want to give this to anyone because we don't know at this point. And especially him having Rudy, Josh, and his two daughters and his wife, They'll be all right, but he still has two daughters that are going to shake hands with cousins and friends, and eventually those end up contacting older people. This is how that stuff spreads. People are like, oh, we're over-exaggerating. No, no, we're not. That's, it can spread any number of ways. You could walk into a place and be the only customer, not cough at anyone, not breathe, not touch anything, but let's say you hand them a $10 bill for something. And yeah, sure you washed your hands, but maybe it's going to be on that $10 bill. And it'll live three days in there. And they'll eventually count that $10 bill. And then they'll go to a bank and people there will count it. A machine will count it, but still. All the stuff you would have to go to to, like, if you wanted a friend to go to the store for you, you'd have to take out the money you need and say, I don't need to change it back. Put it, spray the inside of the envelope with disinfectant, close the envelope, spray the whole envelope, pick it up with a pair of tweezers, and then when they get there, hand it to them and go, there you go. I don't touch some tweezers. So they don't infect somebody or you don't infect them. And yeah, you start going over the scenarios. And yeah, there's a reason like New York, no bars, no restaurants, no nothing. They're shutting everything down. This is New York City, folks. This is going to be a ghost town. And here in Little Kentucky, if they shut everything down, whoa, yeah. Uh, you'd have two grocery stores open still. And that'd be it. And I wouldn't even feel right about going to the grocery store. And then if they quarantine you or say, okay, you've got this, 
we'll send people over to give you treatment. You're gonna, we don't have a room for you in our little hospital here. And we're, we're not gonna take a chance sending you somewhere else to spread it to our ambulance drivers and yeah, all that. Now you run into, God help, I got enough toilet paper, which is, you know, kind of a joke. I mean, a couple of rolls will get you through a while. And, and if you're my age, you might not live a while. Uh, so that's all I have. That's why we didn't put a video out yesterday. But those Impala M30s, four and a half hours or so out of them, so they're pretty near what was advertised. The sound is good. You know, I did a final review. Check them out. Check the description and the link below. And we'll eventually come back when we feel better uh, with some videos on the DJI Osmo and some demos. You know, maybe when I can go outside and walk around and not have my feet hurt. Although it wouldn't hurt, because then if I'll be hobbling. And if it can keep up with that, that's perfect. Uh, that's what we want. So, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one, hopefully soon. Or someday. If I have a few days off here, you'll know I'm getting sicker.